Hi there, this is Java Jim with First Line Equipment, and I hope you're doing well today. Uh, in front of us, as you can see, the back sides are two beautiful, gorgeous Bezerra prosumer heat exchange espresso machines. That's a tongueful. So uh, we're showing you the back side because the front side looks really, really nice as well. And uh, these machines just arrived here into First Line Equipment here in May of 2020. And um, these machines I saw in Italy at uh, a convention in October of 2019. When I saw these, I ac absolutely fell in love. So we're gonna give you an overview of these machines. Uh, basically just uh, simple how they work. Um, and basically just a construction and an overview of these two fantastic machines. Uh, the one thing I do like, uh, and you can say Bezzera, Bezzera. Um, I know the, the folks, the family who owns it has a certain way, but in the U.S. I hear all sorts of ways to say it. And I apologize to the family because I do know the dad and the son who uh, run the company. And uh, the beauty about them is I, I've been to their manufacturing facilities. They have an R&D lab uh, with R&D folks. They also produce... Uh, pretty much their own frames and uh, that wasn't done on purpose just to let you know they produce their own bodies I've seen the robotics in the facilities uh, they produce a lot of stuff they're not just assemblers and then I've also saw their other building where they actually do the assembly of their prosumer machines so they have speci a specific area where they produce these and the commercial machines and the home machines now, uh, Bezzetta is one of the top companies for us here at First Line. Uh, very important to us. We've been doing business with them since about 2005. Uh, they produced machines also for other companies. Uh, for instance, in the mid 2000s, a company in Germany. Uh, they also produced an, a machines for a company in California. I'm not gonna mention any names, but if you do your research, you'll figure it out. Uh, but I really, really like their machines because uh, they are robust, they work. Uh, we have customers since 2005 where the machines are still operating. Of course, you may need a pump or a heating element, but they go the long term, okay? So, without further ado, I introduce to you the Bezerra Crema line. I'll rotate these machines around for you. Okay, and that one there. And these things keep on dropping. It's kind of funny, but um, you see two different models here. And uh, there is one, and let me step here to the front. Uh, basically, you have a semi-automatic version and you have what we call the electronic version here. Um, what does this mean? The semi means is you can press the button on and off. There's a little switch here. Uh, it does illuminate when you're making the espresso. And once you have the proper amount of espresso that you desire to come out, uh, you press the switch off. So simple on and off. Uh, it is basically uh, pressure stack controlled. Uh, you have uh, two or a dual manometer, dual gauge here. Uh, one is for the steam pressure in the boiler, and it's a heat exchanger, and one is also for the brew pressure, and some people say pump pressure, but it's really the brew pressure. What's the resistance of the pressure uh, that's, that needs to be created to get the water through? So this is more of a reactive gauge, not that of the pump. So finer grind means it'll go up, coarser grind means it'll come down. Now, uh, let's get to this side. Basically, we have the electronic model. The electronic model basically has a PID controller that controls the temperature of the boiler, which is related to the temperature uh, for the espresso. So pressure stat, simpler, older school, newer school is the PID controller. And when I say electronic, we're talking about the programmable push buttons right here. So you have a single and a double. You could program two doubles if you like, a short and a long whatever you want, it measures the amount of flow of water. Okay, so it's not a timed dose, it actually measures by the flow of the water. Now, if your grind is way, way too fine and the OPV opens up, the flow will be less. 
okay? So it doesn't mean that the machine is defective. If the grind's too fine, uh, the OPV is going to open up. Uh, and then here you only have a single gauge because you don't need the steam pressure. You're already gonna have the program temperature on the PID. So in this case, you have a single gauge. Now you do have um, basically joysticks for on both machines with uh, nice uh, wood accoutrements uh, on the joysticks. And it, you have a lock position in the up. Sometimes they come in a down depending on who uh, produced the machines at Bezeta and if they had a little vino vino during the siesta, but most of the time they're up. Uh, so if you look here, they lock in the up position. With that in mind, uh, just note, and there's a, a lot of folks say, I want the joysticks. You're either full closed or full open, okay? If you need somewhere in the middle, you may have to hold the joystick for a certain amount of milk that you wanna froth or steam. So keep that in mind when you're deciding between a joystick and a rotative knob. Uh, I like both, I can work with both, but just keep that in mind. Uh, you have basically a nice uh, bat set up porta filters. They have their logo now on the bottom and uh, dual spout. And this one has a two cup basket in there. Um, and then if you put it there like that, they also now have the slanted porta filter, so your tamping is going to be even. So I really, really like that. And let's go on this side. The machines come with a single cup basket. This is a nice paperweight, a nice metal blind uh, for back flushing, a cleaning brush for the group head gasket. So you wanna clean uh, the gasket and the screen. The machines can be back flushed, uh, as we noted. My biggest pet peeve, plastic tampers, as I've said before, there is a conspiracy in Europe. Uh, they give you these plastic tampers, which are really not effective. Okay, a lot of movement here. Um, it is a, a little bit curved, but get yourself a good tamper. We sell a, a lot of nice good tampers at First Line. And then also a plastic scoop for dosing. Uh, if you watch my other videos, I overfill the basket and just use that to level it off. So you always have the same dose. And this basket actually looks like it's about 22 grams. It's actually really, really deep in here. Uh, and I do like that. So those are the accessories that come with the machine. Uh, there is also uh, some warning stickers on the top here. Uh, those can come off. I've already tried to take this one off and they're a little bit on the sticky side. So we'll take those off. And there are actually two top cover plates on the machine here, but let's dive here. Uh, 58 millimeter group heads uh, with brass, hot water wand, multi-directional steam wand, multi-directional. And there is a uh, tube in here to insulate it for non-burn, but they still put the rubber mount Again, with the non-burned wands, if you're keeping your hand on here while steaming, uh, you will burn yourself. It's only made to touch quickly and move it, okay? And then we here we have a two-hole tip, and there's a little uh, O-ring that's here, and an O-ring on the inside. I don't recommend that you remove this often because you will eventually damage those O-rings. So don't remove it often. As you can see, I can just hand tighten it there. Uh, drip tray is removable, so all stainless steel. Okay, nice drip tray, cover. And those little, two little items that I was kept on touching before. This little adapter right here. Actually, when you put the drip tray in, you're gonna have some residual water coming from here. This needs to go here, and that goes in, and then anything that splashes out of this valve here uh, will end up in here. Uh, a little weird at first when I saw it, uh, but I understand it. It's, I'd rather have it go through here than on the, on the panel, so I do prefer that. Uh, a little, little, little pet peeve on these two machines, because they have a gorgeous white finish, is that when you put the drip tray in here, or when they assembled it and shipped it to us, there's little markings here on the white paint. So a uh, little tape there but these are brand new out of the box and they have a little marking because they came with the drip tray. Little pet peeve, just letting you know that that will be normal. 
okay? Uh, from my understanding, these are stainless panels, so they shouldn't rust underneath, uh, but just to make you aware of it. Uh, the power button is right here, okay? Turn that on. It's trying to fill, but the water tank is empty, uh, so we would need to fill that. Stainless steel top plate here, another one here, water tank cover here, and we have an intake hose with a particle filter, okay, right here. And it actually doesn't look to be too much of a good particle filter, but we do sell the water softener. Has a V cut here, so it doesn't suck up against the tank. V725 water softener, get yourself one of those. So we sell them on our website as an option. Uh, and then here's the return, could be the uh, OPV as well as uh, the safety and the bleeder valve. So I haven't looked inside the machine yet. That's how new this is. Water tank is removable, okay? Inside here, there's a switch. Uh, if you have a, wa a water softener you put in, you may have to lower the switch a little bit. My general rule of thumb, a lot of people like to fill the reservoir inside the machine. Uh, I don't like that because if you spill water inside, uh, there's a pump, electronics inside. So I suggest filling always outside of the machine. Clean the reservoir, uh, dishwash uh, soap, uh, basically once uh, every two weeks, you wanna remove it. No dishwasher, okay? Nothing is dishwasher safe. That's my general rule of thumb. And let's fill this up here. And in this case, we're using fresh water right from the tap, no softened water. I do like to use it in the beginning just to flush out the machine. This uh, pipe here, and as you can hear, the machine filling, if you see, I'm squeezing the hose. That's just to make sure, if I get a different sound, I know it's pumping, okay? Because you may hear the noise, if you heard it, it was like and then mm. So it is actually pretty quiet for a, a vibration pump. And now it's filling up. Again, I'll test it, and we're good there. Another little pet peeve of mine. The body widens it a little bit in the back but if you take this cover off, it's a little bit on a difficult side and it can scratch a little bit of the white paint. So you're gonna see a little bit of that. Uh, my suggestion is come in from the back, okay? Put it in and then slide it to the front, okay? You might have to lift a little bit here over the screws, but, or just come in on one side and then push into the other but you're gonna get a little scratching here. A uh, little, another pet peeve of mine that I told Betsa when we got these machines and I looked at them. Uh, no matter what machine you get, even if it's stainless here, it's gonna scratch. Uh, it's pretty tight. So uh, if now you may say, oh, they should make it looser. Well, guess what happens when it's loose? It rattles. So it's a, a catch 22 situation. Okay, see it's still taking some water there. I'm gonna take this side out. Fill up this reservoir. Now while we're filling, uh, before purchasing the machine, check the wattage. Make sure you have enough amps uh, for your, uh, from your outlet. Check your circuit breaker. A lot of times these machines are basically gonna be um, 15 to 20 amps. And I'm gonna say this one's probably 15. Put that one in there, and we're gonna power this one on. Let's get this little thingamajiggy here, this adapter, put it in place, and let's power this one on. Different set of lights if you notice, okay, here. Now, PID is off. This one started filling. So you see that delay? That delay is the brain unit recycling or resetting itself. So every time you turn on, you're gonna get that little delay. Pinch the hose. We hear that little noise difference. We're doing good. And uh, this machine with the white and the wood is absolutely stunning, stunning. Okay, the nice thing I like about Batsada machines is um, on the inside in the boiler, 
They usually have two probes, and again, I haven't checked here, but most of the models have two probes, a minimum and a maximum, so the heating element doesn't kick on until the heating element's submerged in water. And we hit the positive button there. Let's see what reading we get. Minus, okay, that's uh, programming. And you on, I hit that button there. And it's probably heating at this point. Okay, this machine's still filling. You can count the seconds. I think it's about 90 seconds. If it doesn't fill, try to fill the water tank all the way uh, when you're filling these machines. And check out the measurements. Really slim machines, a little bit on the tall side. Uh, vertical boilers on the inside, but nice and slim. And if you are gonna face the back of the machine on an open counter, it's gonna be absolutely stunning looking. It's one thing I like. Not a machine to be put in up against the wall like these back here because you really want to show off the white. And we do sell some white uh, colored grinders on our website, which would match perfectly with this. Uh, one to, that comes to mind is uh, the Mazer Minis. Uh, we do have them in white as well. So there you heard the pump click off, and this one should start heating there as well. And then press the button there, light goes on. We'll get some water through the group head. Okay, get that there. And then let's press, the, this one has a semi-automatic button as well. And we got some flow there. And these are uh, Bezerra group heads. If you look at the portafilter, usually uh, other companies, the portafilters have the lips at the nine and three, okay? This has it at the one and seven. So if you're buying a bottomless uh, Bezerra or one of the other ones, make sure it's like the one and seven. Uh, the Strega is different, so don't buy anything from the Strega for this machine. Uh, typically, there's a heating element in the group head on this machine, so uh, we'll probably find that. Okay, it's already warming up there. I can feel it. So you basically want that nice and piping hot before you make the espresso. Um, and that's pretty much it on the Bezerra Crema uh, espresso machines. Again, they're heat exchangers. Pressure stack control for temperature, PID controlled, semi-automatic, electronic. So you have a great choice, but really, really good looking machines and a machine that you know will last a long time in your home or small office or a small commercial uh, facility where you like to make espresso and cappuccino. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video. Uh, you enjoyed looking and reviewing at these wonderful machines. Uh, make sure you come back because we will be making some espresso and cappuccino with them uh, down the road. Uh, thank you for watching. Again, Java Jim with First Line Equipment. Give us a thumbs up down below. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or comments, please ask below or visit the pages. In the midsection, there's a Q&A tab, question and answer. You can ask your questions there uh, and then we'll get those answered for you. Thank you for watching and have a great day.